Number five, new species? So apparently there's a new genus and species that's been found. I love it when they make announcements like this, but only with dinosaurs, you know what I mean? It also makes things way more scary, doesn't it? Scientists have discovered the remains of a mysterious truck-sized shark which swam the coastlines of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans around 20 million years ago. That's not a great white or a meg. The newly discovered species is a close relative of the megalodon we're used to seeing and the ancient ancestor of today's great white sharks. Perfect, a hybrid shark. That's what I'm hearing, right? Isn't there like four movies about this already? Like this is Jurassic Park 5, Megalodons in New Jersey. I swear I've seen this. Like we know where this is going. Fortunately for us, there's about 45 million years worth of a gap between all three, leaving scientists scratching their heads on how the shark even evolved. Like when did it die out or did it even die out? Could this be the new Megalodon sightings people have but just like the new sister species? This new species has been named Megalolama paradoxodon. That's pretty sweet. There's gonna be a new metal band with that name soon, just wait. A brand new genus of its own as well. The species name, Paradox, refers to the fact that the shark emerged so suddenly in the geological record after appearing to have split from its closest relative around 45 million years earlier. A paradox. So it's like the daughter of a Meg and the grandmother of a great white. Only five of the species' teeth have been found in California, North Carolina, Japan, and Peru. Based on the remains, the researchers think that the shark grew to around five meters long, making it smaller than its relative, but still absolutely megalithic. Like almost a city bus size. Most importantly, the discovery tests our understanding of the shark family tree because the megalodon and megalolamna are so closely related, scientists are still arguing about the missing branches to said family tree. Yeah, that's horrifying, all right? Number four, origins. All right, let's take a deep dive here before we talk about these new fears that I've recently developed. Also, if you like what we do here on the channel, Hulk smash that like button. It really helps us out here. We like to keep it spooky around here, so let us know down in the comments what your biggest fear of the seven seas are. If it's creepy, if it's crawly, and it swims, Send her over my way. Before these TikTok videos and Google Earth finds, the Megalodon was first written about in 1835 by Swiss American geologist Louis Agassiz, who named the species Carcharodon Megalodon. He was the first one. He was the OG on the case. And of course, the first Megalodon teeth, such as those found by the HMS Challenger in 1873, were dated in 1959 by zoologist Vladimir Cherneski to be around 11,000 to 25,000 years old, popularizing claims of the megalodon still hiding out there somewhere. Megalodons are thought to have reached at least 20 meters in length and lived from about 23 to 2 million years ago. The meg, however, wouldn't be known by its scientific name until the late 1990s, when scientists placed it in its own genus, Carcharoslus. Some paleontologists think that the megalodon and modern white sharks evolved within the same lineage, but now, obviously with this new species found, it's kind of thrown off the family tree a tad. Yeah, they don't know if they should put it like near the ancients or like 60 million years ago megatooth territory, or closer to what we see in the movie Jaws. So they're kind of confused. Somewhere in the middle, give or take, that's like a lot of wiggle room, you know? A lot of years there. In 2008, scientists conducted an experiment to determine the bite force of the great white shark to see what the megalodon could have done damage-wise. The largest great white recorded could produce 18,000 newtons of force versus the megalodon of 180,000 newtons of force. Plus all the shaking around sharks do to rip their food in half. Yeah, all of a sudden I understand the urgency of all these studies. That's horrifying. Number three, new teeth. Okay, so I thought these things were just like hung up on a wall in a museum somewhere. Nope, they're finding these things like every day. Jonathan Valentine found his first megalodon tooth after just like 10 minutes of one of his most recent dives. The fossil hunter has found several huge fresh teeth from the extinct megalodon in North Carolina last month. Jonathan Valentine, who runs the Digging Science website, said in a recent video that his haul included a tooth that was seven inches long and another that was six inches. Dude, that's the size of like your whole hand and like one tooth. One in a mouth of hundreds. That's a big set of jaws. Megalodon tooth finds usually measure between three and five inches, but our boy here got lucky with these two big tooths. According to the Florida Museum of Natural History, on his North Carolina trip, Valentine explored coastlines that form bays and canals that used to be deep water ocean floors millions of years ago. Huge megalodon teeth can be found in these embayments. Florida is typically where he would explore to find megalodon teeth and ice age fossils, but these two giant gems were apparently 
primarily laying in what was a shallow nursery during the Miocene period, where big female megalodons would come in and have their babies and then ship back out to sea. Those babies would have a variety of different foods to eat and they wouldn't have to worry about other deep water predators being so close to shore. They'd be able to just chill out, grow humongous, and then cruise into the ocean at their own pace. Apparently these waters in North Carolina would be like a nursery and then a feeding frenzy on local whales. Yeah, Valentine said, quote, holy that thing's huge. That thing is insane. That's a big tooth. Wow, that's a pretty good start to this trip. Yeah, I'd say so, dude. You found one of the biggest teeth ever found, and in North Carolina. Also, isn't it scary that they weren't like in the middle of the Atlantic somewhere on a ship? They were like on the shores of North Carolina. Terrifying. Number two, bigger in the cold. A new study reveals that the very, I hope, extinct megalodon or megatooth shark grew to larger sizes in cooler environments than in warmer areas. Kind of goes against what you think when you think about sharks, right? Florida, Bahamas, Mexico, yeah, nope. Yeah, they could be anywhere in the Atlantic or even up by the North Pole. DePaul University's paleobiology took a look through time and space at the body size patterns of the megalodon. In reality, this species is only known from teeth and vertebrae that we found from fossil records. We don't really have a good idea of what it's actually girth looked like. Accepted scientifically though, the thing was at least 50 feet and maybe bigger. The new study re-examined published records of megalodon teeth along with their estimated total body lengths. In the mid 1880s, German biologist Carl Bergman came up with a theory that larger animals thrive in cooler climates because their size, naturally, would help them retain heat more. Therefore, the bigger fish would be in the cold. I catch your drift. Walruses, whales, I get it, I get you. Seems like this at first that the impression that scientists were under was the colder the area, the bigger the animal, therefore the longer and better it would thrive. However, with new studies, it shows that mostly of the unidentified nursery areas that the megalodon liked are all located near the equator in warmer waters, making it even smaller than possibly the ones that were swimming in the cold. It's possible that megs were actually much smaller than the nursery's teeth found in the colder areas, making the cold therapy theory true? It's hard to tell with this creature because like, it swam mostly wherever it wanted. Cold, warm, it didn't care. If it was hungry, it was coming for you. The results of the university indicates that the modern climate change is rapidly accelerating marine habitat shifts to more polar latitudes in apex predators, such as sharks and whales, up near really, really cold areas. This would also lend evidence to the specific diet of the megalodon, which was mostly large whales, who also live in the deep, dark cold. DePaul's conclusion is that not all geographically different megalodon individuals grew to gigantic sizes equally, but the colder creatures were also so much, much larger swimming in the cold water, ultimately securing Bergman's OG rule. All right, so the Keys trip is back on then. Warm water for the win. They don't swim there, or they do both. Oh. And the number one spot, alive? Could we have just found evidence on sonar to prove that there's something absolutely terrifying and massive still swimming the seas? We've found teeth in recent years and last month that have been relatively fresh. We've seen Google Earth blurs signifying that the waters can be really deceiving. Now, researchers think that they caught a little glimpse at something very weird and very big. Apparently sonar showed a 50 foot shark nearing a boat off New England waters. Shark researchers are accustomed to surprises, but the Atlantic shark Shark Institute was a little taken aback when something resembling an extinct megalodon shark appeared to just swim under them on sonar. Of course, flabbergasted after picking up what appeared to be a massive 50 foot shark sized blurb, the sea scanners underneath the boat were fritzing. An Instagram post detailing the alleged discovery is currently making waves on a recent shark research trip. Researchers said, quote, we were amused to see the shape appear on our fish finder for several minutes. Researchers from the Atlantic Shark Institute detected this anomaly in an undisclosed area. Unfortunately, the scientists' excitement quickly faded after the monster just turned out to be a massive monster school of fish. Whew, just sitting in the same spot for a while. Yeah, thank God. Researchers said, quote, We waited for more of the rods to go off. However, much to our disappointment, the shape just started to transition into a large school of Atlantic mackerel that hung around the boat for about 15 minutes. That's terrifying. Yo, can you imagine just a massive murky shadow under your boat for just minutes on end not moving? Just sitting there. I'm pretty sure I would just start playing the Titanic music. You know what I mean? It's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Okay, so no actual Megs caught yet, thank God. But it seems like we keep finding these remains, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but not necessarily a good thing. The cool thing, however, is each month there's more and more studies actively searching for this thing. To be honest, I hope it's gone, gone forever. 10-foot hammerheads are scary enough, aren't they? Like eyes on the side of their heads? 
That's terrifying. Number five, the Lernean Hydra. I'm no Hercules per se. Yeah, nothing. But thankfully, actually, because those are pretty big shoes to fill. Because that dude had to be brave beyond just like deep breaths and good pep talks. Guy had to literally fight like a 10 story condo building. How does one dude equipped with a club and a sword kill a 10 story building with teeth and three heads? Well, five heads. Well, 10 heads. Depending on how many you cut off, I guess. I guess that's why his name will be remembered and mine will be lost at sea. I guess he was a demigod, half powerful, half regular. A little unfair. By the way, which Hercules did you grow up on? I grew up on the Disney version and Kevin Sorbo. Ugh, oh, what a hunk. But there's been a lot, including the ancient real guy. She's known as simply the Hydra. As a serpentine water monster in Greek and Roman mythology, it's terrifying. Its lair was at the Lake of Lerna, also known to be the entrance of the underworld. Yikes. In the myth, the monster is killed by Heracles, Hercules, as the second of his 12 labors. Okay, so this guy did it and then went on to go and do like 10 more. 10 and 0. Like, how hard can it be, right? I mean, it does have multiple heads. Yeah, it does have that. Also, apparently has poisonous breath and blood so violent that uh, its scent is even deadly. Later versions of the Hydra story added regeneration to the monster's abilities too, so it can just start growing heads back at will. For every head chopped off, the Hydra would regrow two heads. So every time the Meg bites a head, there's two more. Another two are growing, yeah. Good thing this thing was hungry and swallows whales whole because uh, that's gonna be a lot of protein. Number four, Jormungandr. Keeping it in the mythology department, we head up a little north. Jormungandr, AKA huge monster. Also known as the Midgard Serpent or the World Serpent. It is a sea serpent and the middle child of Loki and giantess Angraboda. And those middle children, huh? Always the problem, kids. I would know. I am one. According to the pros Edda, Odin took Loki's three children by Angraboda, Fenrir, Hel, and Jormungandr, and tossed Jormungandr into the great ocean. The serpent grew so large that it was able to surround the entire earth and grasp it in its own tail, as it's referred to as, well, the World Serpent. And apparently, when it releases its tail, Ragnarok will begin. Yeah, basically a destruction to the end of the world. Yeah, all this rich history is so heavy and gloomy, isn't it? Isn't there like a, the sun will shine like California for all to enjoy? Like, where's that written down? Nowhere, huh? Just cataclysms and monsters. Jormungandr's arch enemy is the thunder god, Thor, and apparently a Megalodon too. Cause let's face it, a giant serpent versus a four story great white, it would definitely be a good fight. I think if Thor showed up and started smashing up both, it would literally be the best Marvel Universe movie yet. Another encounter comes when Thor goes fishing with the giant Hymir. When Hymir refuses to provide Thor with bait, he strikes the head off Hymir's largest ox to use as his bait. Okay, easy, Roid Rage. Sheesh. They row to a point where Hymir fishes, he prepares his fishing line and a large hook and baits it with the ox head, which Jormungandr bites. Thor then yanks the serpent up from the water and the two throw hands. Okay, so it sounds like it isn't that big. I mean, it's huge, but the wrapping around the planet has got my dimensions off. Maybe it was like a metric versus imperial thing back then. I don't know, what do you think? Comment down below who would win because when it gets into mystical powers and stuff, it becomes a little unfairly matched, no? Number three, Cthulhu. Come on, we know this guy. Now this would be a good fight. This is sort of fathomable. Well, kinda. An extinct shark versus a made up ender of worlds. Cool, let's do that. Basically a giant humanoid octopus dragon versus the Carcharasless Megalodon, a triplex size apex predator. It's definitely gonna be in Vegas and pay per view. I'll tell you that for free. Cthulhu is a fictional cosmic horror entity thought up by the twisted mind of cosmic horror writer H.P. Lovecraft. First introduced in his short story called the Call of Cthulhu, published by the American pulp magazine Weird Tales in 1928. He's like the first creature Lovecraft pondered up. He's terrifying. He's supposed to bring Armageddon upon us when he wakes up from the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, again, not all sunshine and rainbows with these stories. Actually, like, ever with these stories. Cthulhu is a great old one, almost the god of all gods in these stories. All these characters intertwine and apparently he's our last call. Lovecraft depicts it as a gigantic entity worshipped by cultists in the shape of a green octopus, dragon, humanoid, bipedal creature. And it's like 10 stories high. Yeah, like massive. Like us looking at toy army men. The Lovecraft universe, aka the Cthulhu mythos, its appearance alone is enough to haunt your dreams. Lovecraft describes this guy as a face full of octopus-like feelers, a scaly, rubbery looking body, sharp claws on its hands and feet, and of course, dragon's wings. So it can fly and swim. In other words, the worst thing you can imagine. 
Yeah. Cthulhu can fly, which he has on the Meg for sure. And also the mind control. I don't know how Shark's brains works, but Cthulhu gets in there. Yeah, you're in trouble, Sharky. Number two, the Leviathan. Okay, so we're diving into some very sacred text now. The Bible. In said pieces of scripture, there's a tale of a giant creature that could swallow up cities, apparently, and is also an awesome roller coaster at Canada's Wonderland. Gotta try it if you haven't been on it yet. This twisty, turny, vicious monster was actually modeled after this twisty, turny, vicious monster, the Leviathan, the second of the great monsters described in the book of Job. This Leviathan, Leviathan, is an absolute unit of a sea monster who's impervious to literally any human weapon. I mean, what were the weapons back then though? Like bows and arrows, swords maybe, little pokey things, you know? It's not gonna do much. Apparently locusts too, yeah, those are terrifying. This Leviathan breathes fire. It emits smoke from its nostrils and it's related to another ancient monster called Lotan, a seven-headed giant serpent who's represented as pure chaos. I mean, what Bible creature isn't terrifying though? Was this giant sea snake a water dragon? Cause apparently it's something like 300 miles long according to the Bible. So it's like Jormungandr territory, but longer. Maybe it's the same creature told by two different peoples? Oh, <gasps> mind blown. Again, the Megalodon, I think, would just chomp this thing and dive deep down to the twilight zone and it's lights out. We've seen Jaws, right? Yeah, picture that, but like 40 times the size. Yeah, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Number one, Godzilla. I had to, obviously, we're having fun here today. Godzilla, yes, of course, the king of kings, AKA Kaiju, originates from a series of Japanese films. The character first appeared in the 1954 film Godzilla and became a worldwide pop culture icon ever since. Appearing in a ton of different media, 32 films, four American films, video games, novels, comic books, TV shows, you name it. Godzilla has been, like I said, the king of king of all monsters. Of course, a phrase first used in Godzilla, King of Monsters. Godzilla is enormous. It's destructive. It's a prehistoric sea monster awakened and empowered by nuclear radiation. With the nuclear incidents of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Lucky Dragon 5 incident, Godzilla doesn't really like nukes. Yeah. The amphibious reptilian monster is basically based around a concept of a dinosaur erect, standing up, very tall. Of course, a bony plated back and tail, and let's not forget the special abilities Godzilla has as well. Atomic heat beams, or as I like to call it, stank breath. Dude had tonsil stones so bad, nuclear energy generates from them. Well, not really, but inside of his body using electromagnetic force to concentrate it into a laser radioactive beam. Amphibious, of course, so it swims and breathes underwater, which is gonna come in handy. Immune to conventional weapons and can regenerate, yeah. And it's massive. Of course, Godzilla was said to average around 150 feet tall. In the American version, Godzilla is like 400 feet tall. Like, just a little bit bigger. This is kind of a no-brainer here, obviously, right? This little sunfish would have nothing on the king. Starting off at our list at number five is Deep Blue, the biggest great white shark ever recorded. Now, when we think of a great white shark, our mind probably goes straight to the shark from Jaws, and there's gonna be a lot of Jaws jokes in this, so bear with me. And Jaws was intentionally sized up to give off a more monstrous appearance for the sober screen, a size no shark could possibly grow to. I mean, the average great white gets anywhere from 12 to 15. 15 feet long, whereas old Bruce in the film was a staggering 25 feet. Well, meet Deep Blue, a great white shark who's 20 feet long, making her the biggest great white shark ever recorded. Despite her monstrous size, and I'm gonna be honest, no offense here, horrifying appearance, Deep Blue is actually pretty friendly and has even been recorded swimming with humans, even letting divers hold onto her fins for a ride. And you can explain to me for six weeks how it's safe to grab onto one of her fins for a swim, and I think I would still stay on the beach, thank you very much. Not sure how comfortable I'd be holding onto something that I know could eviscerate me by accident. Yeah, I guess I do own cats, so maybe I'm guilty of this already. Now, footage of Deep Blue is enough to make me a little queasy. Seeing the size of something this big swimming around makes me shiver. She's the closest thing we have on the Earth to the Megalodon right now and almost makes you wonder, is she 100% Great White or is Deep Blue a distant relative? A great, 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 great sharky granddaughter of the Megalodon. Is there some prehistoric blood throwing through those fins? I'd love to get up close and ask her, but you know, I, I did just eat half an hour ago, so I don't know if I should be going anywhere near the water, so I'll stay where I am for now. And hey, if you're loving the Megalodon content, I know you ghouls do, we've got oceans full of Megalodon videos for you to enjoy and explore on the channel, so get comfy, click through, and why not subscribe while you're here? Coming in at number four, we have Something's Coming. Our next clip comes to us from TikTok user Horovitz. Hmm, Horovitz, top five scary, maybe we ought to collab. My people will call your people. I'm the people, actually, so 
Hannah will call you. <laughs> and true to their name, Horovid shares with us something spine chilling. Taken from the front of a boat, the camera spots something on the horizon swimming forward, creating a large wave as it goes. I can't repeat what the caption says, but just know it pretty accurately summarizes what I think most of us would be saying if we saw something this big hurtling towards us. As it's coming forward, it almost looks like it's a submarine dawning on the boat. Until you take a look over the side and get face to face with the absolute heaving unit of a shark swimming happily alongside them. The commenters on this video took note of this, with someone writing, that's a baby mega. Scientists estimate that baby megalodons would have been around 8 to 10 feet long at birth, so if anything, we're being underwhelming calling this thing a baby meg. Someone else writes, so megs aren't hiding anymore. Nope, they're done playing and they're letting us know they are here. It's hard to get a feel just from this clip, but there's no denying the shark is massive. Scary is still is how it disappears back into the water after rising, a scary reminder of just how deep the ocean's waters go, and just how far away from them I'd prefer to be. Now, some commenters have suggested this could be a basking shark, a docile species of shark that avoids humans. But take a look at a basking shark's mouth and then tell me if you still trust that it's docile. Sure, it only eats plankton, but I'm not taking any chances with something that's got a mouth that looks like a black hole. Number three, curious shark. Another clip posted to TikTok, this one shows us a very brave great white shark who just wants to know exactly what all the commotion is about as it comes up to greet a couple of sailors by the side of a boat, saying hello the way only a shark knows how, by gnawing on just about everything it can get its teeth on. The shark in this video is massive, looking big enough to appear in my nightmares tonight and every night after that. Especially when it starts to make its way up to the boat's motor, thrashing about, chewing on everything to see if maybe, just maybe, any of this is edible. It gets far too close for comfort for me. I mean, already being face to face with a shark is one thing, and this guy is basically inches away from this thing's mouth. And who's to say what could have happened if this massive predator prapped itself even a little bit more onto the surface of the boat? It'd be the captain now, that's for sure. It's a scary reminder that when it comes down to it, a shark is a wild, uncontrollable animal. And a safe as we think we are on the water, we always have to remember who actually runs things down there. We're coming onto their turf. Now the people filming this video have got some fantastic composure, I've got to say, laughing through the whole thing as if there isn't a prehistoric sized sea monster flopping around trying to eat their means of travel. That's the kind of confidence I'd like to get someday. Either that or it's that nervous laughter you do when you know you're in serious trouble and you're too scared to react properly. I kind of suspect it's the second one. Swimming in at number two spot is this TikTok clip posted us from Shark. ABC ABC, who from the name alone I have to imagine is pretty into sharks and shark based content. In this short clip we see an absolute titan of a shark swimming up to check in on a bunch of surprised tourists who are all huddled together on a boat in a way that's making me extremely nervous. Just from looking at the shark swimming up slowly to the boat I start to sweat. The thing is practically the size of the boat itself. It looks like it could upend the whole thing and send everyone into the water just by accident. Maybe it's just everyone crammed onto that tiny little boat that's really getting to me. You know what these people need when you see a giant shark in the water? I've been waiting all video to say this, you're gonna need a bigger boat. Worth it, we did it. Okay, end the video here, I hit my peak. <laughs> Luckily, despite all my worrying, no one in this clip was hurt as the shark was just checking them out, probably scouting them, letting all this little sharky buddies know for later that if you swim up real cute and let the humans take pictures of you, it makes it real easy to get the drop on them. I just don't trust them. And finally, at number one, the beach stalker. Our number one clip comes to us from Dubai. The video captured shows a bunch of tourists and locals enjoying a day on the beach when they'd be disturbed by something a little fishy, or rather something big and fishy and sharky to be specific. I'll stop beating around the bush. It's a giant shark that came up to the beach. That's, that's what I'm trying to imply. A shark was spotted stalking its prey on the coast of Kite Beach, a beautiful beach popular with the tourists. The shark can be seen almost sneaking up on the beachgoers. How? I'm not quite sure. Usually the music cues gives this sort of thing away. While most of the beachgoers have the good enough sense to hustle up onto the sand away from the shark, surprisingly slowly though, I've got to say, this one lady saunters out of here like it's nothing. I've seen people get out of a pool faster because somebody peed in the water, let alone that there's a shark pacing up and down trying to decide which one of you looks like it'll make the best appetizer. The thing swims up and down like it's scanning the buffet. Scarier still than that is the woman who's caught out in the water between a shark and the hard place. We see the lifeguard charging in to try and keep the situation cool and hats off to the guy because that's more cool 
cool and collected than I could possibly be, but that's why he's a lifeguard and I'm a YouTube host. Luckily, no one was hurt during this and everyone got themselves off the beach and made it out safely, but I'd bet you anything it was probably a bit of time before any of these beach bums ever made it way back to the water. Oof. Number five, the HMS Challenger. Between 1872 and 1876, the HMS Challenger became the first expedition organized to gather data on a variety of ocean features, including ocean temperatures, seawater chemistry, ocean currents, marine life, and the geology of the seafloor itself. For this, a British Navy Corvette was converted into the first dedicated oceanographic ship, equipped with its own laboratories, microscopes, and other scientific tools actually below deck. Sweet. Among the Challenger's expedition's discoveries was one of the deepest parts of the ocean, the infamous Marianas Trench in the Western Pacific, where the seafloor is at least four miles deep, the deepest place in all of the oceans. It's now called Challenger Deep, if it's 11 miles or more down. And of course, they also found some teeth at the bottom of the ocean floor. Yeah, scary. Some big ones too. The Megatooth Shark, aka the Megalodon, was estimated to have gone extinct in the early Pleistocene epoch, roughly four million years ago. Despite this, there have been reports of some pretty fresh looking Megalodon teeth from the late Pleistocene going into the Holocene. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it. This thing's probably not even dead, you know, at all. Like, we've found it in every epoch. Yeah. It has long been known that the teeth were misdated, although using invalid techniques and technology. Phew. But not that far off. So like, those were all pretty fresh teeth then, huh? Yeah. Cryptozoologists have agreed that the teeth seem to be between 11 to 20,000 years old. Hmm. From another sample they had from Madagascar, scientists are still scratching their heads at these numbers. So what made it survive millions of years, but then go extinct in the last couple thousand? I don't know. Not really sure if the uh, math adds up on that one. Something's definitely fishy here. Number four, TikTok. Thankfully for us, social media has us glued to our phones every two seconds of the day. Good for some things, bad for others. Great for filming UFOs and Karen's freakouts, bad for self-esteem and nearsightedness. It's a balancing act, you know? This next video and story comes from a recent TikTok video that has a ton of people in awe. Alex Albrecht, who was on board, managed to capture this eerie footage of an enormous creature as it swam near the surface, alongside and eventually under the ship, this SSF Corwith Kramer. Albrecht then shared this clip to his TikTok page saying, quote, sailed six weeks in the Atlantic, saw this big f***ing shark. Great title, dude. Why didn't Discovery Channel steal that title, you know? Right to the point. Albrick, alongside other students on the ship, owned and sailed by the Sea Education Association. We're doing a program on marine biodiversity and conservation and sailed from the Gulf Coast of Florida up to Woods Hole, Massachusetts, which is where this Leviathan was snapped. Hard to picture a Megalodon near Boston, you know? This clip has already gone viral with more than 37 million views and a ton of people claiming the animal is actually a huge basking shark. Oh my, okay, I, uh, I thought we really found her here on this one. A basking shark though, okay. Huge one. Apparently this is the second largest fish in the ocean. First being whales or this megalodon creature we're after. But this shark is like 40 feet. That's like an 18 wheeler with a trailer. These fish are massive people and the megalodon is apparently like twice the size of that. Yeah, 60 feet to 80 feet. That's some deep blue sea right there. Number three, Marianas Trench. A giant shark caught on camera scouring the bottom of the Marianas Trench has sparked some debate if megalodons still exist or not. The huge shark has been seen swimming over what seems to be an abandoned shark cage, but others say the creature is nothing more than a common sleeper shark, which can survive at least 2,000 meters beneath the surface. A 50-foot shark, one mile down the Marianas Trench. Okay, that's, that's pretty deep. If the Meg was still around, I would definitely be checking the deepest part of the ocean since we don't really know or see that often. Many think this is a Pacific sleeper shark. Definitely looks like one, but the size here is a problem. Pacific sleepers or Greenland sharks as they're known only grow up to about 20 feet. The shark in this video is apparently like 50 feet long. Now that's based off a human sized cage under its belly. I don't know. This definitely seems like the chillest megalodon I've ever seen. Sleeper shark definitely sounds more fitting. Just, you know, cruising at the bottom, just chilling. I don't know, after watching this video a couple times, something's not adding up. Looks too old and docile to be a great white's great grandfather, you know? Also, I don't know about these cage dimensions. Looking a little small to me. What I'm taking from this video is that sharks are chilling at the deepest part of the ocean. That's what I've learned here. That there isn't water deep enough for a shark. Also, Meg's like shallower, warmer water where there's like an abundance of life. I don't know, I'm not sold. Still absolutely terrifying. The green filter makes it look like a lake too. That's horrifying and spooky. 
I'm calling a bust on this one though. What do you think? Number two, deep blues sea. Divers found something. It's not a treasure, but it's a 22 foot ocean monster known now as deep blue. Aw, that's cute. That's a cute name. Deep Blue, I like it. She was discovered swimming dangerously close to a pair of brave divers in Guadalupe, Mexico. Deep Blue is a female great white shark that is estimated at six and a half meters long and in her 50s. The shark was first spotted in Mexico by researcher Mauricio Padilla. Deep Blue was even featured on Discovery Channel's Shark Week. All right, Hollywood star, you made it to the big leagues, kid. The shark was spotted by marine biologists studying tiger sharks near the island of Oahu, Hawaii. Much bigger than a tiger shark, of course, and too big to be a great white, Deep Blue is now the largest shark apparently ever discovered, and also largest to swim next to. Videos show the shark as calm and non-aggressive around humans. Yeah, I would never lead with that, though, you know? Oh yeah, that shark? No, no, super friendly. Jump on in. The video of researchers touching and holding onto her while swimming next to her has brought on some heavy internet criticism though from shark researchers. A marine biologist criticized the behavior saying the shark should never be interfered with, stating that it's an enormous wild predator and that repeated contact from humans can overstress the animal. Okay. She's got a good point. However, I don't think that that apex predator is really stressed about anything, you know? This thing is a swimming tank. I agree though, respect it from a distance, you know? Take some pictures, maybe a discreet sample, and then piss off. Okay, so biologists thought we finally had her, huh? Maybe found a megalodon. Nope, just a massive great white. Makes you think though, between deep blue and 11,000 years ago, these monstrosities were just surfing the coasts. Think they're still out there? And our number one spot, bite size. The blue whale is the largest living mammal on earth, right? Well, apparently during the pandemic, we found a massive blue whale in Maui, South Africa that had washed up on shore and the weirdest part, it was bitten in half. Oh yeah, yeah, blue whales don't eat other blue whales. So what could have possibly bitten off more than it could chew? For some numbers here, the blue whale was like 30 meters long, yeah. That's like four shipping containers. The chew job was also not caused by plankton eating teeth. These were shredders. It must have been a much bigger creature to bite it in half. The mystery of the attack will never be solved as proof slowly decays, but we know that there's a shark out there at least the size of a blue whale. Further investigation has found evidence that the chomp could have been an oversized great white shark. The mystery of the incident, of course, has caused widespread interest and confusion among animal lovers and Poseidon himself. Scariest part, the shark apparently bit off the tail of the whale and then dragged it down by its face. Social media sites reported the incident. The story went viral. Some people were terrified that a creature that size could attack a whale, that size. I mean, that's the animal kingdom for you. It's ruthless. Scientists now have concluded that white sharks are now the top predators of blue whales in the Southern African waters, making this just another day at the office for old deep seas buddy. Hey, fish gotta eat, right? Protein. Okay, so now we just got a really, really big great white swimming out there, eating whales in half. Perfect, nice, yeah, not a meg though. No, 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 just a giant great white eating whales. Again, I'm not anxious at all. <laughs>